सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली द इंडियन इकोनॉमी रिकॉर्डेड ग्रोथ ऑफ थर्टीन दैट इज जी ग्रोथ ऑफ थर्टीन इन द फर्स्ट क्वार्टर ऑफ दिस फाइनेंशियल ईयर दैट इज अप्रिल मे जून 13.5 percent double digit growth is by most, if not all, yardsticks is fantastic growth. This was the fastest growth in four quarters year on year. And remember, the last year was the quarter, um, the year of COVID. So uh, GDP growth was really uh, hit by the pandemic and the post-pandemic lockdowns. That was the second wave. But this data has been received with a lot of mixed reactions because the reserve bank of india had projected a growth of 16.2% for the first quarter so this is 13.5 not 16.2 so a lot of economists and analysts are saying this is disappointing and the growth momentum is significantly lower than what the rbi had projected and what they had expected for the economy and uh, mind you uh, this growth comes on a base of the last year which was a very poor contracting year like i mentioned earlier if you compare it to the year before covid that is 2019 20 the fiscal year 2019 20 quarter 1 this is only 3.8% higher and that was a time when the economy had been hit by a slowdown don't forget the slowdown before covid so what does this number indicate for the remaining three quarters of this year Uh, there was a projection of at least seven percent growth, if not more than seven percent, for the full year. The IMF had forecast seven point four percent. Will the Indian economy be able to meet that target, or do we have to prepare for growth which is below seven percent, which is not great news for the economy, which is just recovering from COVID and the war in uh, Ukraine? Hello and welcome to Macro Sutra. I am YP Rajesh, managing editor at the Print. and i have uh, radhika pande from the national institute of public finance and policy economist and uh, very senior researcher radhika 13.5 like i was saying is a double digit growth on a base there is a base effect of course but did 13.5% come as a bit of a disappointment for you or uh, is this how you know uh, people's expect- expectations were uh, unreasonable so it was expected that the economy will grow in double digits because uh, as you mentioned the april to june quarter of last year was uh, afflicted with the second wave mm-hmm. of covid so we had a, a low base so on top of that low base when we compute the year on year chain we were expecting to get a double digit uh, growth number now projections vary depending on the model the assumption that we are taking in while making projection uh, so reserve bank of india projected 16.2% uh, growth uh, there are some other economists uh, other standard setting agency that expected around 14% 15% mm-hmm. so going by all these uh, the projection uh, the gdp number the year on year change came in slightly lower than expected. expectation mm-hmm. as per the rbi's number but we must not forget that uh, this situation is very volatile every uh, now and then mm-hmm. every quarter every month in fact every week situation is changing mm-hmm. uh, so taking into account all these things i think 13.5% is a reasonably uh, good growth mm-hmm. and uh, we need to be more optimistic and we need to see how economy uh, shape up during the next quarter mm-hmm. but 13.5% is was on expected lines mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh, there is good news and there is not so good news in in this 13.5% would you want to elaborate a little bit on that sure sure so uh, if we look at the good news first so uh, from the we always look at good news side. first yes so if we look at the good news the expenditure side uh, consumption has picked up really well and uh, if consumption picks up it's a, it's it bodes well for the economy because uh, consumption constitutes 60% of the gdp so if a major constituent of the gdp is uh, picking up 
mm-hmm. it shows it uh, it it is a good news so yeah. uh, and this is despite inflationary pressure so if yes. we look at the april to june quarter we saw inflation picking up we saw uh, on the uh, 4th of may the reserve bank of india uh, raised the uh, repo rate by 40 basis point mm-hmm. uh, so inflation rising interest rate hike started to uh, emerge in the april to june quarter so despite that we see mm-hmm. that uh, private uh, consumption expenditure uh, posted a growth of around 25.9% mm-hmm. so that's a, a, a piece of good news and the other is investment so uh, investment uh, which is uh, characterized as gross fixed capital mm-hmm. formation gfcf which is the proxy for private investment mm-hmm. uh, that also has seen a 21% growth uh, not only that its share in gdp has risen mm-hmm. so its share in gdp has risen to 34.7% which is a very encouraging uh, sign for the economy which is still recovering from pandemic and uh, from 2019 onwards mm-hmm. we saw investment slowing down so if we look at that consumption and investment have appeared as the two major drivers of uh, uh, growth uh, also the services sector mm-hmm. we have seen a big rebound in uh, services sector which has been supported by urban demand mm-hmm. so till now we have seen that uh, you know contact intensive services like travel tourism they were they were uh, showing muted growth mm-hmm. but uh, in april to june quarter we have seen that this service uh, sector rebounding so that means that after opening up the economy from the omicron wave we are seeing uh, at least urban uh, demand picking up and that is supporting the growth in travel tourism people are moving out uh, people are traveling they are uh, work from home is giving rise to you know going to offices so travel is picking up so that these three components have been the main drivers of growth mm-hmm. on the uh, uh, not so uh, good news we have uh, manufacturing mm-hmm. manufacturing sector has uh, shown despite a low base it has shown a growth of only 4.8% which means that input cost pressures have dented the performance of mm-hmm. manufacturing sector that's also visible in the if we look at the private corporate sector uh, firm financials if we look at their profit margins input cost pressure uh, how much of that would you blame on inflation and how much of that would you blame on uh, external factors primarily external factors so uh, if oil prices are rising mm. the chip prices are rising commodity prices are rising so these are primarily uh, global factors which is getting mm-hmm. transmitted to uh, both wholesale and retail inflation imported inflation imported inflation yes so so that is what uh, uh, dented the performance of mm-hmm. the manufacturing sector and as i said it's also visible in the private corporate sector mm-hmm. uh, financial if we look at the uh, financial like the profit mm-hmm. margin there also we see that the share of input cost pressure is rising so there was a time you know after pandemic when firms started doing a lot of cost rationalization but that is again uh, you know uh, showing an increase the costs mm-hmm. uh, pressures are building up so which is getting reflected in the manufacturing sector uh, performance mm-hmm. and the bigger the biggest disappointment and that which goes uh, even further it's not just restricted to this quarter is the uh, external sector mm-hmm. when we look at net exports uh, there that has been the biggest drag on growth because uh, our imports have uh, more than doubled imports mm-hmm. showed a growth of 37% exports showed a growth of 14% so mm-hmm. net exports is negative and it mm-hmm. has become more negative because we are importing more uh, because again the prices have risen and secondly because rupee has depreciated so due to that also when you have a weaker currency your imports get uh, costlier mm-hmm. and uh, in your piece uh, published uh, this morning that is uh, friday in the macro sutra column of the print and we will be sharing the link uh, with the notes of this uh, show you have said that because of the fears of a global recession and we yeah. know what's happening in the us in europe and china in japan uh, that exports could take a hit that yes. is our exports could take a hit due to this you know 
possible global recession. Yes. So uh, recently, uh, last week of August, we had the uh, Jackson Hole Symposium. It's a, a conference of uh, economic policy mm. where major central bankers come and deliver mm -hmm. addresses. So there we saw uh, the US Fed chair making very explicit uh, observation that they will be focusing on inflation and uh, they will be going in for aggressive rate hikes. Mm -hmm. This will lead to pain for households and businesses. So mm -hmm. that was very clear, and that uh, we saw markets tumbling. Mm -hmm. The U.S. Uh, S&P markets tumbling by around 3.6 percent. Even uh, on Monday, Indian markets tumbled. So there is a uh, already the U.S. economy is under a technical recession because mm -hmm. we've seen two quarters of consecutive uh, contraction mm -hmm. and going forward if there are aggressive rate hikes that will lead to demand destruction mm -hmm. and if there are if there is demand destruction on a global level it will impact exports mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. we have to remember that exports was one of the main drivers of uh, growth last year yeah. we had robust uh, merchandise exports but this time uh, the contribution of exports to growth is under question because of these global headwinds. Mm -hmm. And you're also worried about uh, the monsoon and agricultural input which is uh, you know affecting uh, economy, the rural economy. Yes, yeah, so uh, again this time for the April to June quarter we had a decent agricultural growth 4. of around 4.5% yeah. uh, but going forward we sh and that was also supported by the spike in agricultural prices. So if you see the nominal uh, gross value added of uh, agricultural sector it is quite high. Mm -hmm. So which means that uh, the food prices have uh, risen. Mm -hmm. But going forward, because of the uneven monsoon, and we are already seeing that uh, the, the sowing of Kharif crops mm -hmm. has been lagging as compared to the uh, corresponding period of last year. So if that uh, acreage deficit is not bridged, mm -hmm. that will impact Kharif production and that will impact agricultural GVA and also lead to higher inflation, serial mm -hmm. inflation. So from what, what you say, from what the data shows, uh, Radhika, it's quite uneven. The, you know, the recovery yes. has been uneven. Uh, even when you compare it to the, you know, pre-COVID uh, year, which like I said, was a year which was hit by, yeah. it yes. was a slowdown year. I mean, yes. the economy had already begun slowing down yes. even before the COVID. pandemic. Yes. After the numbers were released yesterday, the finance secretary, Mr. T.V. Somanathan, was still very confident that, you know, the full year uh, GDP growth rate would be above 7%. Like I said, IMF has forecast 7.4. And uh, Mr. Somanathan said that the government is focusing on higher CAPEX. Uh, he is not worried about uh, private uh, capex being affected by interest rate hikes because it's not something which is yes. so closely linked to yes. uh, interest rates it's more uh, you know the, the consumption demand cycle and he also said the government would control uh, or try and control revenue expenditure as much as possible so that uh, you know growth doesn't get hit and you know uh, deficits are uh, controlled okay, yes. so uh, does that give you confidence or uh, should we prepare for below sub seven percent so on some of the uh, discussion points, particularly on deficit, mm -hmm. uh, yesterday the deficit numbers were also released for the first four months mm -hmm. and uh, April to July we have uh, achieved 20% of the estimated fiscal deficit for the full year, which means that uh, on fiscal front we are doing quite well, uh, primarily because our taxes have been robust and secondly, uh, uh, on expenditure side, it's it's uh, it has been controlled to some extent. So, on fiscal front, we are relatively okay. Mm -hmm. What uh, could cause some deviation from seven percent growth is mainly the global conditions. How adverse global conditions may become, and that will depend on uh, where global inflation is moving. What is the trajectory of the interest rate hikes? Uh, what happens to crude oil prices because if you see crude oil prices they uh, started to moderate and again we are seeing an increase in uh, crude oil prices so uh, despite recession we are seeing elevated crude oil prices mm -hmm. commodity prices are still elevated so all these factors will shape the trajectory but what people are uh, what uh, the concern that has emerged is that because the 16.2 percent first quarter uh, projection mm -hmm. was not met so the RBI's overall annual projection of 7.2% would not be met, mm -hmm. assuming that the other for the other quarters yeah, we achieved yeah, the yeah. projected uh, growth rate. But 
given all of that, there would be some slowdown because the base effect ha yeah, is normalizing. Yeah, yeah. So there would be some slowdown, but the extent to which uh, the global headwinds would impact uh, GDP, that mm -hmm. will be the uh, main uh, uh, thing to uh, watch, watch out, out for. for. But for on the consumption side, uh, things look favorable because uh, even after June, if we look at July, August, all the urban side high frequency indicators, uh, passenger sales, GST collections. Mm -hmm. Today, the uh, PMI number for manufacturing sector mm -hmm. uh, came. Again, it's showing 56.4 mm -hmm. reading, uh, which is quite encouraging. Uh, so all these uh, indicators point to the fact that consumption revival is happening mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. going forward with the festival effect coming, we should see uh, again some support for uh, consumption. On the investment side also, if you see capacity utilization has picked up to 75%, even uh, new projects that were announced in April to June quarter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is one variable which the Center for Monitoring Indian Economy uh, monitors through its CAPEX database. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We saw a big uptick in the new projects. So there is a uh, optimism Momentum on the private sector. and optimism. Yes, so that should, so domestic factors look quite uh, favorable at the moment. In fact, the other number I was uh, seeing uh, earlier today was uh, GST collections are again uh, likely to cross 1.4 lakh trillion. crore yeah. uh, for August. That is, you know, GST which was collected in July yeah. and recorded in August. Yeah. So that is another, uh, yeah. you know, good number. Uh, is there anything uh, you think, you know, uh, I was reading uh, an analysis uh, earlier today which said that uh, the government must push more reforms in the coming months so that it will, you know, pump prime the economy. You talked about, you know, consumption and investment need to grow. Uh, I mean, is there anything that can be done in such a short term that, that it will have a favorable, positive impact in this financial year itself? So one thing that the government is doing is on capex uh, uh, incentives it is giving to the state governments and it uh, on itself also they are uh, increasing uh, capital expenditure that is one on the other side what uh, they need to do is also to see how foreign investments can be encouraged mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. uh, we saw a, a prolonged period of foreign investment outflows and then we saw inflows that is something if we can improve on the ease of doing business, on investment mm -hmm. climate, the kind of taxes which are imposed and again they are withdrawn, they are again imposed. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is a need to rethink on uh, stability of uh, taxation mm -hmm. and to think about improving the ease of doing business which has improved considerably but there is a scope for improving it further. Okay. Let's take some questions from our uh, viewers. Uh, Radhika, we have quite a few questions today. GDP growth is... Uh, Everybody is interested in GDP growth. Uh, Akash Sharma has the first question. We have sort of answered this, but maybe you can give a short summary again. Why do you think the economy underperformed compared to the RBI forecast? Also, going ahead, what problems do you think India could face due to a wide CAD, current account deficit? Current account deficit, if we look at the July uh, figure, which is out, uh, we've, uh, the trade deficit has touched USD 30 billion, uh, which is uh, due to our imports surging mm -hmm. and exports not picking up at that pace. So uh, it's the current account deficit will uh, pose a drag on growth mm -hmm. uh, because of the factor that we've already discussed that a new fresh uh, source of uncertainty is uh, the speech by Fed uh, Chair Powell oh, well, who said yeah. that they will be going in for aggressive rate hikes. Mm -hmm. So we don't know how what what is the pace of uh, rate hikes, how many more instances of rate hike after that uh, they will pause. So that will lead to uh, dollar strengthening and mm -hmm. uh, foreign investments also moving out of the country which will lead to currency depreciation, will lead to imported inflation. So it is these external factors that are uh, posing a drag and are likely to pose a drag on growth going forward. Mm -hmm. Hindol Bhattacharya, is the government fiscally prepared to make the necessary expenditures to save our economy in view of the recession in the US and China, save our economy? They have done, uh, if you look at the last year, a number of steps have been taken to support the economy. Uh, 
emphasis on capex uh, free food distribution uh, cut off uh, cut in excise duties but going forward it will depend on the buoyancy of taxes so if if uh, the buoyancy if tax revenues remain strong the government will have the headroom to spend more on extension of free food grains mm -hmm. or spending mm -hmm. more on uh, infra uh, which is uh, critical for pump priming growth so uh, it it is what we are seeing as of now initial uh, trends indicate that taxes uh, tax growth is buoyant and if those uh, trends continue the government would definitely have scope if required to incur additional expenditure mm -hmm. uh, the next question is from aditya and i like the way he phrases it do you think with such high growth rate of 13.5% private sector confidence will further increase and they will in turn increase investment in capital projects yes so gdp the aggregate number is 13.5% uh, within that if we look at the investment number which is uh, gfcf the gross fixed capital formation it is also showing encouraging uh, trends it's around 21% growth mm -hmm. the share has increased and also capacity utilization has picked up and as i mentioned the cmi numbers also indicate a pick up the business confidence uh, survey so there there are a lot of these business confidence surveys conducted by uh, think tanks like ncair they also suggest that uh, confidence is picking up mm -hmm. so on the one side consumer sentiments is still you know it it rises and uh, we still need to see a sustained pick up but on the businesses front mm -hmm. we are uh, seeing the uh, sustained confidence the next question does not have a name or what our producers do is you know when someone sends a question under the name of sherlock holmes we cannot attribute that question to sherlock holmes we would have loved for sherlock holmes to watch our show but obviously he's not around to watch it for us number question number 5 for us while most of the time we focus on gdp do you think it's time we also focus on per capita income we need to focus on per capita income but the problem with per capita income is it's a very slow moving gradual uh, indicator uh, if we see uh, over the uh, course of the years we have seen improvement in per capita income but that also needs to be seen in conjunction with what's happening to other measures like inequality what is happening to mm -hmm. the various social sector schemes and so on so the i think in this context the best uh, approach should be to improve the gdp level and to see that there would be there should be trickle down effects such that the benefits reach mm -hmm. the lowest strata and we see an improvement in the per capita income we see improvement in employment levels Uh, which should support the per capita levels hitesh notial hi hitesh uh, we missed your questions in the previous episodes hitesh is a regular uh, watcher of uh, macro sutra my question is don't you think 13.5 may sound good and the government may celebrate it as their achievement but don't you think it is actually underperformed if you look at the projections by rbi and other organizations we sort of discussed this at detail uh, in length and uh, it's double digit and look at the global headwinds uh, it's it's an expectation because rbi made that forecast uh, but it's just a quarter i mean you yeah. want and also if we look at globally other countries we see because all these countries have faced uh, a first uh, second wave of covid in the april to june quarter mm -hmm. we look at other countries we look at china we look at us uk they have seen very subdued growth so given that uh, there is uh, the growth is impressive yes it's not uh, attained the expectation or uh, uh, what rbi had projected mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then every organization have has their own model their own assumption and uh, that should not be the benchmark that mm -hmm. you know if uh, the numbers have not uh, equivalent to rbi's projection then mm -hmm. it is a disappointment uh the last question is from rishab atre if we compare today's gdp with 3 years ago we are just 3.3% ahead i want to correct it 3.8% yes. ahead uh, that's okay pandemic and seasonal factors apart is it a good figure or are we way below uh, way below what i mean it's a it's a difficult question and what about pfce and capital formation yeah so uh, if we exclude the pandemic years and compare with the uh, pre covid year that will give a real sense of 
how much recovery has happened. Mm-hmm. So if we see uh, the how much economy has recovered as compared to the pre-COVID uh, corresponding quarter, we see there's a 3.8% uh, growth. And again, this is uneven because if we look at the contact intensive services, mm-hmm. even though they showed an impressive growth in this uh, quarter over the last year, as compared to pre-pandemic, we are still lagging. So yeah. that is an uneven uh, uh, growth rate. Uh, but going forward, we need to now see that if we have some uh, assumptions or some estimates of medium term growth to achieve of around 6 to 7 percent, more needs to be done mm-hmm. on the policy front and also to see that consumption and investment uh, picks up. Whether mm-hmm. it is low or high is a, a relative uh, sense. Mm-hmm. but. Yes, there is definitely need improvement is required on uh, improving the growth potential. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Actually, Aditya has another question. We'll take that one as the last question, Radhika. Uh, simple question. Uh, is this growth without job raise, as in is this jobless growth? Or are we seeing some positive change in job generation, employment generation also? If we look at the on the jobs front, we need to see you know there are host of uh, numbers or uh, databases on uh, jobs. Uh, mm-hmm. One is the CMI uh, job employment numbers. The other is the periodic labor force survey, which is conducted by the government, which is an annual survey. But now we also have quarterly survey conducted for the urban uh, area. Uh, and another uh, estimate is the uh, number coming from EPFO, the mm-hmm. Employees Provident Fund Organization. And that is a very uh, reliable number because it tells us about the extent of formalization that has happened in the economy. Uh, so because there, if we look at the number of net new subscribers, we see that in 2021-22, we have seen an increase. Mm-hmm. And this is after two years of decline, we see an uh, increase. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. employment is now started to pick up. And even in uh, business cycle, when we look at you know, what are the indicators that move first, and then what are the indicators that co-move with GDP, mm-hmm. what are the indicators that lag, Employment is something that is a lagging indicator mm-hmm. that picks up once we see growth is credible mm-hmm. and it's durable. So only now we are seeing some green shoots of recovery in mm-hmm. employment and we need to see that they are sustained. Thank you, Radhika. That was a fairly elaborate discussion on the GDP numbers that just came out uh, on the 31st of uh, August. Uh, it's just one quarter. We have three more quarters to go. Base effect will uh, wear off. But uh, there could be headwinds, there could be uh, tailwinds, there could be domestic consumption. There are too many factors at play to for us to stick our neck out and say that it will be below 7, above 7. Yes. So uh, our own insight is that let's wait and watch. Uh, things are not so bad, things are not fantastic. So we are somewhere in between. Uh, thanks for watching this episode of uh, Macro Sutra. We will be back next week with another episode uh, looking at another uh, very vital issue for the economy. Until then, stay safe and have a great weekend.